Okay, guys, so we're going to go through the mobility bit. So you can use this um, at the beginning of all the videos that I'm going to be posting on here. So I'll record this as a kind of separate little drill that we always start the classes with anyway. Um, and then you can just do this as your warm up, as your preparation for the other videos, or you can just do it as, as a thing on its own. So we're going to start from our recline position. So come down slowly, get comfortable, try and relax the whole of the back body. So have a fidget across your hips, your shoulders. Make sure that your head and neck feel comfortable. Arms and legs are either just going to rotate slightly outwards and they feel like they're tipping away from the body. Give your fingers and toes a bit of a wiggle and let them just relax. Or you can have your hands resting on the body. You can have your hands resting out to the side. You can open up a little bit. If it's uncomfortable on your lower back, remember you can always just bend your knees slightly, rest the feet so your lower back can just soften. But make sure you feel really comfortable here. And we're going to start just with our simple abdominal breathing. So you can use any breathing style you want, but I'm just going to talk you through what we usually do in class. So hands are going to be on the pelvic belly. If that helps, you get that feel of movement. If you need to, if you're not too sure, you can put one hand on the breastplate one hand on the belly, and you're trying not to move the hand that's on the chest. You don't want to feel the movement is low down. We don't want to feel we're breathing short and shallow. So hand position where it feels comfortable for you. But just take a breath. Just notice the movement. Notice how it feels to start with. With your eyes closed, start to relax your face. Get rid of any tension from around your forehead, your cheeks. Maybe feel your shoulders drop away from your ears. And we're going to make the breath a little bigger and a little deeper each time. So as you breathe in, you're trying to completely fill your lungs. Feeling that movement coming down into the abdomen, the ribs. Pause for a moment. When you breathe out, you're trying to completely empty. So we're getting rid of all that used breath. And at the end of the exhale, again, a little pause. Now you can breathe through the nose, the mouth. If you like, you might want to do a combination of breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. And whatever feels comfortable for you is good. But we're just going to spend a minute just focusing on a nice, deep, steady breath. So visualising all this oxygen coming in. All that tension just starting to melt as you breathe out. Okay, start to gently wiggle your fingers and toes again. Just wake them up. Maybe do some little circles with the wrists, move the ankles. Take a good breath in, open the eyes. We're going to reach the arms straight back. And then just gently lengthen the body out. So you're pushing out through each heel, left and right side, reaching back through each shoulder. Take another deep breath in. As we exhale this time, you're going to hug your knees up. So just grab the tops of the knees. Ankles are loosely crossed and we're going to start to massage and just work into that lower back space. So this movement can be really gentle you know, if you've got a lot of tension. And remember, you work into the point where it's challenging, it's never painful. Taking it both ways. If it feels fine, you can make the movements a little bigger. We're just going to go two or three times each way. Okay, and then once you've gone both ways, you're going to keep hold of your right leg. Let your left leg drop. It might look opposite up to what I'm doing because you're on the camera. So it looks like I'm holding my other side. That'd be the camera. It's an optical illusion. Draw that leg towards your chest and just feel that you're lengthening through the leg that's on the ground. You're drawing your leg up towards you. Just hold it and breathe. Remember, you're using your exhale as a release button. So when we breathe in, we lift, we charge up with energy, we bring oxygen in. 
when we breathe out, we've got that capacity to really let go of all the tension the muscles are holding. Feel yourself get a little heavier. And then change your side, so we're going to draw the other leg up, extend, shake that leg loose, start to ease the knee towards the chest or the shoulder. Just easy breath. And then let those legs drop, give them a bit of a shake. Right, so just moving on to a little bit of lower body work to start with. And we're going to do our simple pelvic tilt. So you're going to bring your feet back up towards you and just plant them hip distance wherever it feels comfortable. Think of your pelvis as your bucket. We're tipping out the back, we're tipping out the front. We're getting this little rocking, rolling action going. And we're just trying to feel that we're mobilising around this hip, groin, lower back area. But we're also trying to find your glutes up gently. So start to just gently squeeze and relax your bum. Get those muscles to wake up. Feel that you've got a nice, even pressure into each foot from heel to toe, inner edge to outer edge. Ankle should feel quite balanced. And then if it feels okay, we're going to make these movements a little bigger now. So we're really starting to rock and roll. As well as taking it forwards and back, we're going to start to tip it left and right. So you're kind of raising up on one side, use the glute muscle to lift up, push into the heel. So just rolling straight across the back of your pelvis. And then once we've done left to right, we're now going to roll around. So think circular motion. Yeah, we're trying to go four or five times in one direction. And then we're going to reverse it. And you can keep this going a little longer if you've got a lot of tension in the, in the lower body. Okay, but once you've gone both ways, come back to centre. Just grab your legs again. Hold the backs of the thighs this time. Extend up and start to move your toes. Just give them a bit of a wiggle. Whatever movement you can get is good. Okay, try and relax the toes. Move on to ankles. Point and flex the feet. And you can mix this up. Remember, we can either do doubles where everything's moving together, or we can alternate left and right. Quite good just to keep your brain sharp so it doesn't get too complacent with what you're doing. Keep mixing and matching. And then circle, roll the feet. Again, either both the same direction, or you can take an opposite direction from each other. And you try to push it as far as you can, basically. We want to work right to that margin. Should feel comfortable, but never force it. And then just wave, just kind of shake and wave the feet from left to right. So once we've done all that ankles and feet, just let them feel quite floppy. Work your knees, just support the backs of the legs, but gently bend and extend. And we're doing this again, either alternate or doubles or mix and match. Some with your toes pointed up and some pushing up through your heels. So we're just changing the tension through the lower leg, the shins, the calves. Once we've done this, we're just going to drop the feet to the ground. Okay, now coming a little bigger into our, our rolling now. We're going to roll all the way up and down through the spine. So feet are planted a good hip width apart. Start with your pelvic tilt again, but squeeze and we're going to roll all the way up this time. So we're peeling up through each vertebrae. Pause at the top, lower gently back down. If it feels quite tight, again, maybe just go three quarters, find that range. If it feels easy, you can start coming up onto Tiptoes, ball of foot, get a little bit more of a lift. And we're just going to keep this moving, feeling that we've got each section, so we're not just lifting with a flat back, we're trying to peel up from tail to neck. We're trying to lower from neck to tail. Okay, as we get to the top this time, then we're going to hold it as a stretch, so we keep the pelvis tipping out the back of the bucket. Shoulders, either tuck them underneath, you're going to support that lift a little higher. It's easy, you can have your feet down. If you prefer, you can have your hands clasped, just brace them beneath you. If you've got great range here, we're going to grab the shins, really lifting up through the hips, tipping out the back of your bucket. Yeah, I'm trying to feel the stretch here, hip flexors, thighs, we're strengthening this underline. Check that you're not squashing the yeah, chin away from the chest if possible. Shoulders are away from ears, and then just hold it and breathe two or three good breaths. 
when you want to come out of this, remember, always come out as soon as you need to. So if you've had enough or if it just starts to feel too much, just come out and relax. But when you are ready to come out, we want to come out slow. So shoulders and top, we lower gently from top to bottom, from neck to tail. Lower back's going to hit the floor again. Just hug your knees, just do that little circular motion. And then drop your feet down. So we're going to come into our side to side movement now. So arms, either just let them flop open, you can reach them back, broaden the shoulders, or you can keep them quite loose, quite low. But we're going to start to tip both legs, so feet and knees, as if you super glue them together, we're going to tip them over from one side. So we're going left side first. It might not look like I'm going left side, I don't know what the camera angle is showing here. So we're trying to tip lower body left side first, over to the right. And once you've got that moving, if you can, you really want to keep this connection with the upper back, knees and feet stay in contact if possible. You can even start to push, so imagine you're pushing your knees slightly down and away. It should feel really nice, this movement, it's a really nice loosener. And if you want to go a little bit slower than I'm going, again, go at a pace that feels comfortable for you, find your own rhythm. The more comfortable you are with any movement, but particularly with the overall we're doing stretching and mobility stuff, if you're comfortable while you're doing movement, your body's going to relax more. If you're forcing it, if you're trying to go too far too soon, your body's always going to win. It's going to fight you. It will just tighten everything back up. And come back to centre. So we're done, going to take our feet wide now. So we step to about the width of your mat, knees together. Try and imagine you're squeezing something between the thighs. So we want this slight inward brace. Abs are engaged, lower back is sinking to the floor. Lower body's going to stay still. Yeah, we try not to move it. We don't want the legs to move or the knees to come apart. Arms are going to reach up to start, so we're lifting. Just do your wrist mobility. Roll the hands, give them a bit of a wiggle. Circling them, figure of eight, folding them forwards and back. If we're going to do weight bearing stuff, or if we're going to be doing a weight session, um, remember you can always decompress thumb, middle finger, around the crease, I'm going to show you this, so thumb, middle finger, you can squeeze and shake, yeah, so we get that bit of traction in the wrist, feel free to do that any time when we're doing any of these kind of loading poses, whether it's in box position or plank, or I might do some of the yoga weights, I get it really useful for that, so that's your wrist mobility, but once we've done that, once we've kind of released our wrist joints, we're going to come to our little shrugs, lifting left and right, so we're trying to reach up without lifting the head off the ground, keeping that lower body fairly fixed. And remember, your range might be quite restricted. You might just start with any foot like you can do this. That's fine. You can still build on that. If it's comfortable, you can really try to stretch up and sink down. Okay, now clasp, push the knuckles up. Draw a little circle. Get that spot right between the mid back and give it a massage. Play with the movement, it should feel lovely this, it should be a really nice thing to do. So just start to take that movement and make it as big as you can. Both directions. And then come back to centre. So we're going to roll it across from side to side. So we're trying to keep the elbows straight here, just because if you let your elbows bend, your body doesn't have to do as much rotation into that thoracic vertebra, which is what we're trying to do. It allows your shoulder blades to do the work instead. So by keeping the arms straight, it kind of forces it more into the mid-back, the upper back, which is what we're trying to do, really. And let the head rock. Just make sure that your legs are joining in. Because sometimes they'll try. You won't even realise they're doing it. They'll just automatically try and, and help. Okay, and then relax your arms. Right, so feet are going to come back together now. Just let the body relax, lower body relax. We're going to do a little bit more work on shoulders. So we'll start just with some elbow work. Just bending and extending. Some with your palms coming in towards you. Some with your palms pushing away from you. And then fold the arms across the rib cage. So we've got our hands and elbows at the same place. We're going to do singles to start with, so we're going to start on your right side, let the elbow go behind the head, sweep it to the floor, 
fold it across so we go back. Open, we come across again. The movement that we're doing here, we go behind, out, and across. Yeah, and your range might be quite limited, you know, if you've got tight shoulders or if it doesn't feel comfortable. If it feels okay, you're really starting to open out. Yeah, we're trying to make this as big as you can. And then changing size, so just switching over onto the left. And then we're just going to do both sides together. So both arms start from the ribs, we take the elbows back. We come in and we come across. Okay, now we're going to reverse it, so we're going to go the opposite way. So we start from the ribs, we do one side at a time. So right arm is going to open out to the floor, behind the head, and then over. So we tip back, behind, and over. Okay, change your side, so we open the side, behind, over. So again, same movement, just reverse the direction. So from the ribs, we start out, behind. And then finally, just finishing with both together, doubles. So if both arms are going to start from the ribs, we open to the floor, we come behind the head, we come back over. I feel I should add a sound effect in here now. The sound of falling water bottle is what we normally get when we're doing this movement. So you can make your own sound effects and add them in. Okay, right, bring the arms, let them just rest now. So step your feet wide. We're going to go right outside the width of your yoga mat. You're going to lift up onto the back of the heel bone. Really important, if you've got your foot down and we start to tip in, you're going to end up really twisting your knee and your ankle. So you're pivoting off your heel bone. And we're just going to get this moving very loosely. So one leg falls out, one leg falls in, and then we lift and we change. Okay, once you've got the legs going, you know, play around if it feels really easy. So, for example, if you can get your leg quite comfortably all the way to the floor, you might want to bring the feet over closer or step a little wider. Play around with your range. If it feels okay on the upper body, we can start to reach back. So, really stretch. And we're trying to draw up through these side lines. And again, this can be gentle, nice and loose, or if it feels okay, you can add a little bit of resistance. So, you're going to squeeze your glutes. Push the kneecap down, get that extra stretch coming to the top of the hip. But just get this rolling. Okay, and just hold it to one side. We're just going to hold it as a bit of a stretch. So we want both legs falling out to the left. So your left leg's externally rotated, right leg internally rotated. You're squeezing that right glute, pushing the knee down to the bottom of your mat. Make sure that right ankle is comfortable, yes, yeah, so reposition if you need to. Feel that your upper body is still fairly flat to the ground, but we're going to reach back through the right arm. So we're working through the sideline. So try to fit it a little deeper, anywhere down here, chest, back ribs, lower back, you might fit top of the hip and thigh. But just hold it and breathe. And then take another deep breath in, relax that side. So we're going to change, lift the legs up, let them fall out to the right. Have a fidget, get comfortable, make sure that the left ankle feels comfortable, knee is pushing down, reaching back through the left shoulder, comparing left and right, you know, building another picture so you've got an idea of how your body's doing. Um, the more kind of familiar you are with your own range of movement, you know, you can nip these things in a bit when things are starting to tighten up, you'll notice it quicker. Just holding that, breathing into it. Okay, and then again, come back to centre. Right, moving to our cobbler's pose now. We'll do our power bit floor work. So feet together, knees tipping out. So those of you that come to our class regularly will be aware of all the power bit floor we're going to do. So obviously this is just a case of doing as much as you can or doing what you can do. Hands on the pelvic belly. Imagine you're gently pressing downwards. Feel your legs get floppy. Just relax neck, head, shoulders. Start to just breathe big again. So we're keeping that breath right deep down. Try not to get back into that shallow breath. But you'll feel that natural rise and fall. And as you exhale, we're pulling upwards. So visualise you're holding your pelvic floor. It's like a big bowl shape. We're trying to feel that we're drawing it upwards. 
any movement is going to be a contraction. So just work on what you can to start with. With repetition, as you get more used to it, you'll feel more sensation there. But even if you just put a very slight lift or squeeze, that's still good. We can build on that. If you're comfortable, we're trying to think about drawing up from your pubic bone, drawing up from your tailbone, your sit bones. And we're just going to do um, our lift and hold. But obviously, if you're doing this video every session, you're going to change it. So your options, you can do lift and hold, lift and hold a little higher. As if you're gradually coming up in layers. Or you can do one big lift, see if you can hold it for 10, 15 seconds and relax. Or you can do individual, you know, imagine you're pulling upon the pubic bone and relaxing the tailbone, the sit bones. Imagine you're doing front to back, left to right. So mix up the variation, you know, as you're doing this, do different ones, but try and do some at least every day if you can. So we'll just take a few more breaths and you're visualising, pulling upwards. Once you've done a good 20, 30 seconds worth, you can completely relax just let the body stay in the coffee pose. And then bring the knees together and just gently brace them inwards for a moment. So kind of squeeze them together, relax the shoulders, just hold that for a breath or two. Okay, so I'm just going to bring you up to seated. So we'll come through our neck mobility and then that will kind of wrap up the, the mobility session. But coming up from your reclined position, you've got your options either take to your side, use your hands, or squeeze your bum, take a good breath in, and you're just going to roll yourself up. Sit comfortably, that can be straight leg, cross leg, whatever feels comfortable for you, it's fine. Um, and then you've got you know, cushions and things that you can use at home to make it more comfortable. But just try to feel that you're sitting tall now. So you want to really get this nice upright spine. You want to feel that the crown of the head I'm being pulled straight up, shoulders are low. We're gently drawing them back to so open right across the front of the chest. Let the neck just soften. Find your neutral, cheekbones above collarbones, yeah, so we're not in this forward flex position. If you want, you can close your eyes with this, otherwise just keep your gaze soft. And we're going to work from flexion to extension. So again, if you want to go a little bit slower, that's absolutely fine. Find your range. Feel that your mid back muscles are active, so the muscles between your shoulder blades, around your shoulder blades, they should feel like they're gently hugging you from behind, just to support the weight of the head as we move forwards and back. Okay, this time as your head comes down, keep your chin just dropping towards the chest, but gently sweep. So we're coming from collarbone to collarbone. And if it's crunchy, clicky, noisy, normal mobility stuff, as long as it's not painful, it's quite normal. And sometimes be a sign of dehydration among us. If you do feel that you're prickier or your joints are a little bit noisier than normal, then well, what's, what's normal for you, rather, um, it might be a sign that you're dehydrated, so do drink plenty of water. Okay, come back to neutral. We're going to start to rotate. So chin slightly lifted as far as you can, left and right. Okay, back to neutral, lateral, ear to shoulder. If it's easy, if you've got good range here, remember your shoulders dropping down. So as the head goes one way, imagine your shoulders shrugging the opposite way. Trying to just create length between the ear and the shoulder, all these tight spots. Okay, keep squeezing the shoulders, find your neutral neck position, point your nose into your armpit, and just hold and breathe. So you're feeling that breath, and then big release, but every time you exhale, we want to try and let go of the tension. Your body creates that anyway, the first few seconds are always going to fight, fight you slightly then it should let you go deeper into the stretch. Okay, back to centre, changing size, nose to armpit. 
I mean, if it's not comfortable to stay tall, rather than slumping, you know, you can, if you need to, use your fingertips just to keep yourself lifted. I'd rather you do that and stay nice and upright than end up then in the back slouch. So either support with your hands in front or the hands behind. Okay, and then come back to centre. So just do some little shoulder circles now, just rolling up and around. Okay, I'm going to make this movement a little bit. Start to take it up one shoulder at a time. Okay, come forwards, lifting the shoulder blades, and we want to move the shoulder blade as well as the shoulder joint. And then just relax your arms, stretch both legs out, give them a little bit of a shake, so just relax them. We're going to come just into an easy back bend. So plant the hands, lift the ribs, lift the chest, shoulders hugging from underneath. We just lengthen from cubic bone all the way up through sternum, keeping your pelvis slightly neutral. So even though it's a back bend, we don't want to overarch the lower back. Yeah? So just keep that slight tuck tail, try and feel that you're active through the mid back. Lengthen the neck, feel the neck grow longer. Gaze is just forwards and up. Pressure is even from here, just from here, hand through fingers. If you need to, you can rotate, you know, find what feels comfortable. Okay, one more good breath. You're creating distance between ribs, hips, sternum, belly, shoulders, and ears as much as you can. On your next breath, then you're just going to lift the head. Bring yourself back up. Okay. So we'll move on to the second video. So that video, you're going to use that either on its own or as a complement to all the other stuff. Okay, thanks, guys.